All right, kids, Greg Johnson here. I get the privilege of talking to you all about the very last lesson in the Old Testament as part of this Old Testament series titled Nehemiah. Now, this is really exciting um, because it has everything to do with Jesus. So remember, everything in the Old Testament points to Jesus. And Jesus is why we live today. He is why we are free from our sin, because he died on the cross and took our sin, all of our future sin, all of our past sin, everyone's sin, so we could be free. We are no longer slaves to sin. But let's go back to Nehemiah. In the last couple of weeks, we have talked about who? Can you name any names? Okay, perhaps Ezra. Remember Ezra? How about Zerubbabel? And today, Nehemiah. Now, um, these are three leaders that God uses. Now, there's a key theme there. God uses them. Now, in addition to the three leaders, we also have three kings. Now, do you remember any of those kings? King Cyrus, King Darius, and the third one is kind of a weird name, especially with an A, King Artaxerxes. Okay, those are the three kings. God uses kings, and God uses leaders. Leaders are kind of kings, but these leaders were Jewish, and they were not kings. Now, if you recall, let's see, King Cyrus sent the um, Israelite leaders back to Jerusalem to rebuild what? What were they rebuilding? the temple, okay? So they were rebuilding the temple. Why were they rebuilding the temple? Do you suppose they had to rebuild the temple because it just fell down? Or was it destroyed? If you said destroyed, you're right. Because what happened was the Israelite people who were living in the country of Judah at the time uh, it consisted of two of the twelve tribes, the tribe of Benjamin and the tribe of Judah. Uh, it was their own country, and Jerusalem was like the capital of their country. Now, they had broken their promises, their covenant to God. And when the Israelites, who were the holy, set-aside people, uh, set aside to be different because they were God's chosen people, when they broke that covenant, there were consequences. And one of these consequences was that uh, they would be destroyed. Now, it wasn't, it wasn't that they weren't warned, the Israelites weren't warned, um, because they were. In fact, the prophet Jeremiah came and God told him, hey, warn the Israelites, warn, warn the, the, the people of Judah, because they're not following the rules I established in the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, that were meant to set aside the, Israelites, the Israelite people, and they'd be different from everyone else. God had Jeremiah provide a warning to the Israelites that they would be destroyed. And they were. In 586 B.C., they were not just destroyed, but they were taken away. Remember we talked about um, coming back from exile. Exile means you were taken into another country to live. And the prophet Jeremiah said, you'd be taken into another country for 70 years. 
Now, what country was that? If you said Babylon, that's correct. So 586, Babylonians came. They <clears throat> destroyed the, the temple in Jerusalem. They destroyed the walls. They took the people back to Babylon to be, live in exile for 70 years. And you find that um, in the book of uh, Jeremiah, that uh, after those 70 years, the uh, Babylonian king, Babylon, would be destroyed by the Medes and Persians. And that king, King Cyrus, was used by God. All of these kings have been used by God. But that king, Cyrus, was used by God to send um, the people um, back to Israel from exile to rebuild the temple. So, the leader that God brought to the Israelites to bring out of exile um, was Zerubbabel. And I love that name because Zerubbabel uh, sounds like rubble. And he was sent back to rebuild the rubble of the temple. That's how I remember Zerubbabel. Then about 50 years later, um, God uses uh, another king, King Darius, um, to send Ezra back. And, and God uses him to uh, uh, get to the hearts of the people. He was a, uh, uh, a Torah expert and wanted to um, show the people how to live their life in a way that was holy and separate from all the other people that were around them. Then you have Nehemiah. Now, if you want to read about Zerubbabel and Ezra, that's in the book of Ezra. And then Nehemiah is um, right there, sandwiched between, um, well, after Ezra, Esther, Nehemiah. Um, but Ezra and Nehemiah were just one book at one time. So they, kind of, they really go together. So all these three leaders and three kings come out of the, the same pair of books in today's Bible. But back then... They had the Torah, and God desperately wants a relationship with you, and He wants a relationship with His people, and so and He wants you to be set aside. He wants to be different. Now, does He want you to build a wall so that you're different, or does He want you to live differently and love differently? That's how He wants you to be different. So let's see first how Nehemiah prays for his people. Hey everybody, I hope you had a good week. Um, I hope you're enjoying the nice summer weather. We're going to sing. I hope you're ready to sing. So I want you to sing really loud like always. Stand up, do the motions, get your parents into it, get your brother and sister into it that are like lazy slugs and they don't want to do it, you get them into it, okay? Here we go.
next song we're going to do. Um, everybody do this. Make an O. That's an O. What's this? B E Y. O B E Y. Faster. O B E Y. O B E Y. Okay, we're going to do this song. I know it's your favorite. Your parents are going to love this song if they haven't heard it before.
going and we're singing So Nehemiah said, Lord, the God of the heavens, the great and awe-inspiring God who keeps his gracious covenant with those who love him and keep his commands, let your eyes be open and your ears be attentive to hear your servant's prayer that I now pray to you day and night. For your servants, the Israelites, I confess the sins that we have committed against you. Both I and my father's family have sinned. We have acted corruptly toward you and have not kept the commands, the statutes, and the ordinances you gave your servant Moses. Please remember that you commanded your servant Moses, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the people. But if you return to me and carefully observe my commands, then, through, then though your exiles were banished to the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where I chose to have my name dwell. They are your servants and your people. You redeemed them by your great power and strong hand. Please, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to hear, and that your servants who delight to revere your name. Give your servant success today and grant him compassion in the presence of this man. Now that was Nehemiah's prayer in Nehemiah 1. You will get to read that this week with your parents going through the devotionals. Um, and you'll go through Nehemiah 1 through 6. Uh, so um, listen real hard and ask a lot of questions. Um, and I thank you for the opportunity for me to be able to talk to you about Nehemiah. Uh, let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for how you are glorified. You're glorified in, um, by using us, Lord. Lord, you are uh, glorified in how you use kings and how you use leaders, Lord, to accomplish your mission. And Lord, in all the things that are going on in this world, all the craziness, all the, the decisions the government makes, the, um, the hatred that people have for each other, Lord, we have confidence in the fact that you will fulfill your plan. Lord, there's nothing that we do that goes unnoticed by you. You've always known us. You've knit us together in our mother's wombs. You knew us before we were born. Lord, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us. We thank you for the example of the Israelites and the, the problems they had uh, the, the sin that they that they made, and uh, yet you still sought after them. And we thank you for seeking after us despite the sin in our lives. And Lord, um, help us to be set aside, to be set apart as holy, to glorify you. In your name we pray. Amen.